has the British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak sunk? That's the word being used for him, sunk. Are his days at number 10 numbered? Is he already looking for a new job? What makes me ask these questions? Let me break it all down for you. On Thursday, in London's Lancaster House, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak interviewed business tycoon Elon Musk. Yes, a Prime Minister interviewed an industrialist, not the other way around. The very fact that such a thing happened has made Sunak an object of ridicule. He has become a laughing stock. The billionaire clearly overshadowed Sunak's AI safety summit. The British Prime Minister heaped praise on Musk, even called him a brilliant innovator and scientist. At the end of the conversation, Sunak said it had been a huge privilege to host Elon Musk. Again, who is the leader of the country there? Why was Sunak indulging in such flattery? Is he really that desperate? Is Rishi Sunak trying to secure a job when he exits 10 Downing Street? His uh, love-in with Musk seemed nothing less than a job application. Sunak's role model appears to be Nick Clegg. Clegg served as the British Deputy Prime Minister till 2015. And now he is the President of Global Affairs at Meta. You see, the formula seems to be simple. Take a licking at the polls and start again with the tech bros on the West Coast. Is that what Rishi Sunak really plans to do? Seeing the situation in the UK, the day might not be that far away. Britons just seem to have had enough. The new session of the British Parliament has started. Yesterday, the King delivered his first speech. King Charles was speaking, but the words belong to British ministers. The speech was the longest since 2005, but it had the fewest number of bills. Even King Charles appeared to be bored. What hope does the rest of, do the rest of the Britons really have? It's almost like Sunak had compiled a checklist to, to limit Tory electoral losses next year. When polled, 73% Britons had said they wanted harsher sentences for those who broke the law. So the Prime Minister decided to deliver. Sunak proposed five law and order bills. He promised tougher sentences for criminals. Laughing gas has now become a Class C drug. Those found in possession could face two years in jail and those found producing or supplying it would be sentenced to 14 years. Harsher laws, longer sentences, all that is well and good. But what really is Sunak going to do with the critical overcrowding in the British prisons? What about the backlog in the courts? How is the Prime Minister going to tackle all of that? It's as if Sunak knows he will not be around to be called to account. The rest of the speech was lackluster to say the least and Sunak's only long-term announcement was to ban all cigarettes for an under-14 smoke-free generation. The Prime Minister had half-heartedly suggested a brighter future but nothing in that speech offered any hope for that. There were no ideas for planning reforms or social care provisions, nothing about the National Health Service, nature restoration, universities or immigration. The new reign was supposed to be the golden Sunak age. At least Sunak hoped that he would be the so-called change candidate. He has offered his share of promises for a better future and he has received his share of mockery for it as well. Most recently, during an interview for a BBC Radio 4 programme, Rishi Sunak claimed only he can change the country. Doesn't matter that the Tories have been in power for 13 years. But the host was quick to tell Sunak that he has a brass neck. But actually, Sunak seems to have given up. At least that is what his actions seem to be suggesting, if not his words. After Sunak met ministers for informal drinks at 10 Downing Street, one of his own ministers, in fact, said that it felt like Sunak had already checked out and is simply looking forward to a few foreign sightseeing trips. That is what the reports are saying. The COVID-19 inquiry has been hearing evidence about Sunak's time as Chancellor. Back then, his nickname was Dr. Death. And why not? It was he, after all. It was him who prioritized handing out economic goodies over saving lives. And now he is being called sunk. His government seems to be sinking. The UK continues to grapple with spiraling grocery and heating bills, higher mortgages, 
crumbling school infrastructure and the Prime Minister is out conducting fancy interviews, desperate to secure a job as he messes up the current one. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the updates on the move.